Good Senor Leonardo, you have come to meet your trouble. The passion of the world is to avoid cost, and you encounter it. <laughs> Never came trouble to my house in the likeness of your grace. For trouble being gone, comfort should remain. And when you depart from me, sorrow abides, and happiness takes his leave. You embrace your charge too willingly. I think this is your daughter. Her mother many times told me so. <laughs> <laughs> Were you in doubt, sir, that you asked her? Senor Benedict, no, for then were you a child. <laughs> you have it full, Benedict. We may guess by this what you are, being a man. Well, if Senor Leonardo be her father, she would not have his head on her shoulders for all of Messina as like him as she is. I wonder that you should still be talking, Senor Benedict. Nobody marks you. What, my dear lady disdain. Are you yet living? Is it possible disdain should die while she have such meat food to feed it as Signor Benedict? Courtesy itself should convert to disdain if you come in her presence. <laughs> then is courtesy a turncoat? But it is certain I am loved of all ladies. <gasps> Only you accepted. And I would I confide it in my heart that I have not a hard heart, for truly I love not. A dear happiness to women. <laughs> they would else have been troubled with a pernicious suitor. I thank God and my cold blood I am of your humor for that. I'd rather hear my dog bark at a crow than a man swear he loves me. Well, then God keep your ladyship still in that mind. So some gentleman or other shall state a predestinate scratched face. Scratching could not make it worse if twere such a face as yours were. Well, you are a rare parrot, teacher. A bird of my tongue is better than a beast of yours. I would my horse at the speed of your tongue, and so good a continue. I but keep your way. In God's name, I have done. You, you always end with a James trick. I know you are old. That is the sum of all, Leonardo. Senor Claudio, Senor Benedict, my dear friend Leonardo has invited you all. Hey! <laughs> I tell him we shall stay here at least a month, and he heartily prays that some occasion may detain us longer. I dare swear he is no hypocrite, but prays from his heart. <laughs> if you swear, my lord, you shall not be forsworn. <laughs> Let me bid you welcome, my lord. Being reconciled to the prince, your brother, I owe you all duty. I thank you. I am not of many words, but I thank you. Please, your grace, lead on. Your hand, Leonardo. We will go together. <laughs> daughter of Signor Leonato? I know it or not, but I looked on her. Is she not a modest young lady? Well, do you question me as an honest man should do for my simple, true judgment? Or would you have me speak after my custom as being a professed tyrant to their sex? No, I pray thee, speak in sober judgment. Why, you face me, think she's too low for a high praise, too brown for a fair praise, and too little for a great praise. <laughs> Only this accommodation I can afford her, that were she other than she is, she is unhandsome. And being no other but as she is, I do not like her. <laughs> thou thinkest I am sport. I pray thee, tell me truly how thou likest her. Would you buy her that you inquire after her? Can the world buy such a jewel? Yea, in a case to put it into. <laughs> <laughs> Speak you this with a sad brow? Or, <laughs> or do you play the flouting jack to tell us Cupid is a good hair finder and Vulcan a rare carpenter? Come, in what key shall a man take you to go in the song? In mine eyes, she is the sweetest lady that ever I looked on. <laughs> I see yet without spectacles, and I see no such matter. <laughs> now there's her cousin, and was she not possessed with a fury? Exceeds her as much in beauty as the first of May, but the last of December. But I hope you have no intent to turn husband, have you? I would scarce trust myself, though I had sworn the contrary, if hero would be my wife. It's come to this! In faith, hath not the world one man but he will wear his cap with suspicion? Shall I never see a bachelor of three score again? Well, go to it, faith. 
And if thou wilt needs, thrust thy neck into a yoke, wear the print of it, and sign away Sundays. <laughs> now look, Don Pedro is returned to seek you. What secret hath held you here that you follow Dr. Leonardo? I would your grace would constrain me to tell. I charge thee on thy allegiance. You hear this, Count Claudio? I can be as secret as a dumb man, I'll have you think so, but on my allegiance. Mark you this, on my allegiance. He is in love. With who? Now that is for your grace's part. Mark how short his answer is. With hero, Leonardo's short daughter. <laughs> if this were so, so were it uttered. Like the old tale, my lord, it is not so, nor twas not so, but indeed, God forbid it should be so. And if my passion change not shortly, God forbid it be otherwise. Amen, if you love her, for the lady is very well worthy. You speak this to fetch me in, my lord. By my throat, I speak my thought. And in faith, my lord, I spoke mine. And by my two faiths and troves, my lord, I spoke mine. <laughs> and I love her, I feel that she is worthy, I know. That I neither feel how she should be loved, nor know how she should be worthy, is the opinion that fire cannot melt out of me. I will die in it at the stake. <laughs> Thou was ever an obstinate heretic in the despot of beauty, and never could maintain his part but in the force of his will. <laughs> that a woman conceived me, I thank her. That she brought me up, I likewise give her most humble thanks. But that I will have a retreat winded in my forehead, or hang my bugle in an invisible baldric, all women shall pardon me. Because I will not do them the wrong to mistrust any. I will do myself the right to trust none. And the fine is, for which I may go the finer, I will live a bachelor. I shall see thee ere I die, look pale with love. <laughs> <laughs> with anger, with hunger, or with sickness, my lord, not with love. Else hang me on the door of a brothel house for the sign of blind Cupid. <laughs> well, if ever thou dost fall from this argument, thou wilt prove a notable argument. If I do, hang me in a bottle like a cat and shoot at me. And let he that hits me be clapped on the shoulder and called Archer. Well, as time shall try, in time, the savage bull <laughs> bear the yoke. The savage bull may, my lord. But if ever the sensible Benedict bear it, pluck off the bull's horns and set them in my forehead. And let me be vilely painted, and in such great letters as they write, here is good horse to hire. Let them signify under my sign, here you may see Benedict, the married man. <laughs> if, if this should happen, thou wouldst be horned mad. <laughs> <laughs> If Cupid have not spent all his quivering minutes, thou wilt wait for this short. Well, I will look for an earthquake, too, then. Well, you temper us with the hours. In the meantime, good Signor Benedict, prepare to Leonardo's. Commend me to him. Tell him I will not fail him to suffer, for indeed he has made great preparation. I have almost matter enough in me for such an emphasis. And so I commit you, and so I leave. My leech, your highness now may do me good. My love is thine to teach, teach it but how, and thou shalt see how apt it is to learn any hard lesson that may do thee good. Hath Lee not only son, my lord? No child but hero. She's his only heir. Dost thou affect her, Claudio? My lord, when you went onward on this ended action, I looked on her with a soldier's eye that liked, but had a rubber tasked hand and a dried liking to the name of love. But now I'm returned. And those war thoughts have left their places vacant. And in their rooms come thronging, soft, and delicate desires, all prompting me how fair sweet hero is. Saying I like her, I went to wars. That would be like a lover shortly. And tire their hero with a book of words. If thou dost love fair hero, cherish it. And I will break with her and with her father, and thou shalt have her. Was not to this end that thou begins to twist so fine a story? How sweetly you do minister to love that no love's grief by his complexion. But lest my liking might too sudden seem, I would have salved it with longer treaties. What need the bridge which brought it in the flood? The fairest grant is the necessity. Look, what will serve as fit is once thou lovest, and I will fit thee with the remedy. I know we shall have reveling tonight. I will assume thy part in some disguise and tell fair hero I am proud of him. And in her bosom I will unclasp my heart and take her hairy crystal with a force and, and amorous encounter in my tail. Then after to her father will I break. And the conclusion is, she shall be thine. In practice, let us put it presently. <laughs>
music. Oh, he's very busy about it. <coughs> Brother, I can tell you strange news that you yet trimmed not up. Are they good? Well, as he bent stamps them, but they have a good cover. They show well upward. <laughs> now, the prince and Count Claudio, walking in a thick pleated alley in my orchard, were thus much overheard by a man of mine. The prince discovered to Claudio that he loved my niece, your daughter, and meant to acknowledge it this night in a dance. And if he found her accord, meant to take the present time by the top and instantly break with you of it. Not the fellow any wit who told you of this. Yes, a good sharp fellow. Well, I'll send for him and question him yourself. No, no. <coughs> we will hold it in a dream till it appear itself. But I will acquaint my daughter with all that she may the better be prepared for an answer if her adventure this be true. Go you and tell her of it. 